Good morning, everybody. This is Richard back at you. We started uh, assembling some of our NV4500 standard Dodge transmission. You can see here, we started stacking the uh, output shaft. This training here, it's getting every gear and just about every piece replaced in it, except uh, the third gear and the input shaft, uh, I believe is good enough to use. It looks brand new still, so. But anyway, you know, we third gear we're just keeping, new second gear, new first gear, new reverse gear, all the thrust washers, uh, everything is just about getting replaced in this unit here. Put some pieces over here I can show you real quick. But you can see here the stack of parts that uh, is coming out of this unit that we're getting rid of, not counting the cluster shaft. So, but we've got the cluster shaft in the housing already, and I want to kind of give you an idea how, how we do this. We would be pressing a bearing on here on the end of the cluster shaft. This bearing diameter on the inside is bigger than the rear bearing that goes right here. But the races are identical in outer diameter, but they are different in the center. I had a unit come in one time. I'm not, I'm, you wouldn't believe it, but they had these races like that. They had them opposite. See, this race pivots on it. It doesn't set flat. This race here sets flat. But it come in with the bearing, cluster bearings wiped out, and that's what I found out what they did. They put the wrong race in the wrong spot. So you just want to make sure you do that. But when you uh, put the cluster shaft in the case, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to press in this race right here. This race right here. And it comes, comes from the inside to the out. It goes like this in there, okay? You're going to press your bearing on here. When you set your cluster shaft down in there, you're gonna uh, not have the end bearing on it. You're gonna leave it off. You're gonna leave your idler gear out. So I'm gonna pick this up real quick, of course, with my bad shoulder. Just hang on just a second. Okay, so what you got here, once you uh, set the cluster shaft down in there on the bearing, it's gonna spin nice and free. And then you're gonna take this bearing right here and then you're gonna press it down inside on this shaft right here down in there until it bottoms out. Okay, once you do that, then you're gonna set the race down on top of it. Once you do that, you've got shims that go under this plate right here to set the clearance on this right here. And what we do is we always start out with the original shims. Now this shim, shims right here go for the output shaft and the input shaft uh, clearance setting right here in this, in this cover. But that gives you a general idea what we got going on underneath this right here. So once I put the original shims back in here, it still uh, didn't have the clearance that I wanted it to have. It still, the shaft would, would rock a little bit. And anytime you have a Conan style bearing on each side, you have to set the preload on this that way it doesn't wobble. Okay, so once we put the original shims in there, we put five thousandths on top of them, put it in, and it took the wobble out, but it was still too loose. So we added another 5 thousandths shim, actually took the 5 thousand out and added a 10 thousandths shim out of this package and put it in there. And I mean, it hit it right on the number. I mean, so that we're really excited about that. So how you can tell, let me flip this over. When you get it right, the shaft will still spin real freely but it has just a slight drag to it. Watch, I'll spin it and it stops. Spin it and it stops. You can still spin it by hand. You don't need pliers on it or anything like that to try to turn the shaft, but you can tell you have just a slight drag on it. You don't wanna to have to sit here and try to, try to struggle to turn it. But if you turn it just a little bit and it stops, that's perfect. Like, before I put the uh, reverse idler in there, it, it did the exact same thing. You could feel the drag on it just a little bit. No up and down movement, not too tight where it's gonna burn it out, okay? Now, when you go to set the uh, clearance on your main shaft, you gotta be really careful because you have this little bearing right here that goes in between your intermediate shaft and your input shaft. So when you preload these two bearings, there's another bearing that goes right here. This bearing 
your race that goes in the back of the case back here. Okay, like that. So when you put these two together, you got this little bitty bang in here taking a lot of load. So you gotta be really careful on how much preload you put on this shim right here, like we did here. So if you put too much, this bearing that's in the center right here, you can knock it out. So you wanna, you wanna set it up just like we set this up. Just like we set that up. About four thousandths preload would be fine. Uh, now, let me tell you something though. Once you get your preload set here, and you go to tighten your fifth, your new fifth gear down on this shaft right here, and you start tightening this nut right here, sometimes it gives you clearance here. So just remember that. So just because you think you got it too tight here, you might not. It might have a little bit uh, more of a tug to it when you turn it, but until you tighten this fifth gear down right here with this special nut and washer, this bevel washer, goes on here that that washer don't even fit and that's what's supposed to go on there isn't that crazy let's make sure there's nut screws on there nut screws on there huh well i can tell you that bevel washer come with this nut right here and uh it should physically you can see it's beveled it should slide down on there so something's jacked up right there. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the camera. I was looking at my hand. See how something's jacked up right there. That ain't gonna work. So we'll have to cut that washer out a little bit to get that to slide over there. So, so the nut tightens down on it. And then these nuts here have Allen heads that go in here too that you tighten down against the threads uh, to keep it from turning. And you also lock tight it. And you also ping the edge right here into that groove. So you got a bevel washer, you got Loctite, you got the Allen head screws, and you're gonna ping it there. So that's how many times you're, you're tightening that, you know, uh, locking that nut down, basically. Like that. But if you notice this gear here, it's so much tighter. Normally they have a, actually have a press on. Let me get that bearing off there. It would've went farther. So there's just no, no movement at all on there. So that's what we want. Normally they're they're tighter than that even. I mean, normally we have to uh, tap them on, so. But no wobbling, that's nice. So when the nut's on there, it ain't gonna try to knock it off. Well, anyway, guys, we still have our fifth gear assembly to put together, get the input shaft and the intermediate shaft in there and get it set up. So I'll do another video here shortly. Y'all have a great day.